Yvette Cooper, thank you for coming on the line. Um, good morning, how, Nick. Good morning to you, Yvette Cooper. How soon will it be before people are sat actually convicted and sent behind bars? Will it be by the end of the week? Good morning. Well, we do want to see swift justice because look, this is criminal thuggery and violence that we have seen on our streets in some towns and cities over the weekend. It's a total disgrace. And so I have made clear to the police they have the full support of government to pursue the full range of prosecutions and penalties for a whole range of different offences, not just the most serious offenders and the most serious violence we saw, but also those who then maybe got involved in some of the looting or were involved in other disorder on the streets. There have been hundreds of arrests so far. There are additional prosecutors in place and the courts are on standby. So the, the criminal justice are, are system needs now? to respond. Are, are, are people not being put before magistrates the, as we, oh, later this morning? Uh, we have made clear that the courts are on standby. We will have an update at COBRA later this morning on that progress, but we need to make sure that there is swift justice in place. Is it your goal that some people, those with perhaps, the, if I may class it, easier cases, will be behind bars by this weekend, coming weekend? Well, I want to see that justice take place as swiftly as possible. As you will know, Nick, there is not just operational independence of the police, but the criminal justice system is also obviously independent of ministers. But the Director of Public Prosecutions has made additional prosecutors available uh, and there has been close working with the courts to make sure that they can move quickly and also to make sure that there are prison places available as well. There are already people who are in custody right now as we speak. And we should be clear, there will be people who are thinking they're going on their summer holiday this week and instead they're going to be facing a knock on the door and a police cell as a result of what they have done. You've referenced COBRA will meet later today. Mm. Is there a possibility you would consider recording Parliament? Well, I've spoken to uh, many MPs who are in the, the communities that have been affected by this, what they want to be as in their communities. And, you know, look, it's really important that they are speaking for their communities because actually these thugs and violent criminals do not speak for those towns and cities. The people who do are those who are involved in the cleanup operations, those who are bringing communities together to, to sweep up the ash from the burnt right. library to make sure they can rebuild but the, the what, wall outside the mosque. What so the at the moment, of... what police is are. The, what MPs are saying to us is they want to be in their communities responding, but we will keep continual in continual close contact. So you're not going them. to be recording Parliament yet? That's not what we're doing okay. right now. What we're doing right it, now is keeping in close contact with MPs. If I take you to perhaps the gravest, and they're all grave, but some of the gravest mm. scenes witnessed were at Rotherham, which is an area you'll know well. It's not a million miles from mm. your own constituency. When you asked the Chief Constable of South Yorkshire why there was no exclusion zone around that asylum-seeking hotel because it was publicised 48 hours in advance. What was the response? Well, those operational decisions are for police forces. No, I understand that, Home Secretary, also... but when you saw that, and you, you'll be aware that that demo was, was promoted 48 hours in advance, why was there no exclusion zone around that hotel? What did the Chief Con how did the Chief Constable respond to that question, or have you not asked? So... The South Yorkshire Police did uh, deploy additional police officers to the hotel. They were also deploying additional officers to Sheffield at that time as well, where there was other uh, disorder taking place. Now, those deployment decisions are, as you know, ones for the police to make, and they have to make those operational decisions. What I have said to the police is... Uh, I want to know that they have enough police, that they have enough... They do obviously have far more public order trained police than were deployed this weekend to make sure they have enough police and also enough powers in place to be able to do that. And I will support them in doing so. But what they had to deal with in Rotherham was the most appalling Home crime. Secretary. Setting Home fire Secretary. to an asylum hotel, knowing that people were involved that was and promoted. were inside, was truly shocking. Home Secretary, that was promoted... 48 hours in advance for the third time why did south yorkshire police senior officers not put an explosion zone around that hotel which is you will be aware as home secretary that is normal standard operating police procedure why was that not when you asked the chief constable how did she reply as you know nick so you've not asked decisions, her, have you, home nick, secretary? nick hang on the decisions are operational and 
it's my responsibility to make sure that the police have the powers that they need and well, also they do, that they the have support they powers. need in order to do so. But what they also need to make sure as they've got is the operational officers in place and yeah, to make sure that they have the ability to arrest and to pursue penalties. So there are, look, there are issues that the police will need to review about the deployment decisions and where police were deployed to in a situation where you have changing patterns of threat, changing patterns of disorder and they need to respond. In practice what happened in South Yorkshire was that additional officers arrived from West Yorkshire, additional officers okay, arrived from North but Yorkshire you've not spoken and they had, yet, additional, they had additional officers deployed. I have spoken to the Police and Crime Commissioner for South Yorkshire. Well, As you'll know they were dealing... Nick, they were dealing with this very late into last night and right that they okay. should do right. so. I, I find we it will extraordinary continue to... that the lives of mm. asylum seekers could well, have been put at mm. risk in Hang a hotel on, that was Hang identified on. as the source of a demo and South York's didn't decide to put an exclusion zone. But I find that staggering. Hang on, Nick. The, I think the issue in South Yorkshire was making sure they had enough police to be able to respond to the circumstances. If you'd now, scarfed off the hotel, like you wouldn't have you. had a problem. Hang on a second. I like you want to make sure that there is enough security in place right. and that there are enough officers in place. And I have continually Can asked I... the police each day to make sure that they have enough public order police in place and that they are responding to these crimes. As but you... what they also need to do is to be able to make sure they've got a strong criminal justice system response now and that people actually pay the price for those crimes. There has to be a reckoning and those who are responsible need now to face proper penalties in the criminal justice system. Now, let me take the views of another police and crime commissioner. This is Donna Jones for Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, who tweeted that we need to understand the views of those who attend rallies, who feel strongly, but don't cause disorder. At the heart of what that commissioner says, is there something that needs to be addressed? Do you and your colleagues need to be aware or alive to the strong feelings that are being felt by many people across the country? Well, do you know, there are people right across the country who have strong views about all kinds of different issues. They have strong views about crime, about the NHS, about immigration, and they debate those issues. And sometimes people have protests about these issues and everybody has a right to peaceful protest in this country. But what we saw this weekend was not peaceful protest. It wasn't protest at all. It was deliberate criminal thuggery and yes. violence. And I think there can be no excuse because what they were doing didn't have any relationship to, you know, some of them claiming this had something to do with Southport and two, three little girls. It had absolutely nothing to do with that. It was criminal violence and thuggery. And I just don't think anyone should be excusing them. No one should be I, I, making excuses I don't for think them she's for these to crimes. Excuse them. She's just saying she feels the government needs to be aware of the views of people who feel strongly about issues concerning immigration, but don't cause disorder. Do you recognise that? Of course. Well, but we should have those debates, but we shouldn't link that to this criminal thuggery because lots of people who have views, uh, strong views about all sorts of issues. Who you know, there are lots of people, frankly, who voted for change in this election that we we've just had. That's why we had uh, such a big change so, in government. But they don't pick up bricks no, and indeed. throw them at police indeed. officers. So to those they who don't have try and set light to fires at hotels. So I think, look, people, want, we should be debating serious issues. And I'm sure there will be many occasions and many days in which you and I will do this, yes, Nick, on your programme. Yes, in a but robust fashion, of course. I think it's really important not to link that to somehow legitimise the disgraceful but, thuggery that does not uh, speak uh, for Britain that we course. saw this weekend. Of course, but you and I have also spoken, and when you were in opposition, you addressed many times your concern of the expenditure towards migrant hotels, which I believe to be in the area of about oh. £6 million a day. You spent a degree of time in opposition, so when will my listeners, when will the people of the country see what the alternative plan is, and people will not be kept in hotels such as the one in Rotherham and Aldershot and elsewhere? Sure. So there's look, there's a set of whole series of policy debate around uh, what we need to do to tackle the criminal gangs who are organising small boat crossings to make sure we clear the asylum backlog, get restore order back into the asylum system and end the use of asylum hotels, which have cost billions of pounds. I just think it's really important that that is a separate debate that reasonable people across the country want to okay. have. That is not what the extremists and the thugs and the criminals okay. were doing this weekend. L what they were doing was pursuing violence. Last minute or so together, because I know you're an exceptionally busy mm. person. You have a quite a chunky piece in today's Times newspaper. You talk of a reckoning for the individuals who took part in the violence, those who whipped them up on social media and in online chat forums. How are you going to go after those, Home Secretary? Well, where there is criminal behaviour 
online, we need to pursue that just as we would criminal behaviour offline. And we know that some of the things that people have been putting online are criminal, the uh, where the threats and the uh, encouraging of violence. But how and so do you we get them if they're online, the... if they're TikToking or whatever it might be, Home Secretary? Sure. How do you get and to some them? And of, some of those people can still be identified and where they can, then we need the action taken against them as individuals because they have to take responsibility for it as well. There is also a responsibility on social media companies. They should be removing material that is criminal. I think they also have to take some responsibility. This, you know, the social media put rocket boosters under this. We've always had uh, you know, small far right groups or small groups of criminals and thugs who want to pursue violence. What happened over this weekend is you've got social media Indeed. putting rocket boosters under so it. How and that's why I think that? the that's companies what... need to take some responsibility. But you can so only request, we... can you? You can't mandate, can you? So there's a series of different things. The, there, is, uh, there were arrangements around uh, taking down misinformation that were in place during the general election campaign. Some of those have been stood down and stopped now. We don't think that's acceptable. There is a responsibility on social media companies now to remove material that is criminal. That is often taking far too long to do. Okay. And there is also a responsibility on them to meet their own terms and conditions, which they're not doing. So we will be pursuing this with the social media companies. But you're right, this raises some wider, longer-term challenging issues. Final questions, front page of The Guardian. You won't have had time to see this, but Dame Sara Khan, who served as Rishi Sunak's independent advisor for social cohesion until May, has suggested the Conservative government left the country wide open to some of this violence and ignoring red flags and stoking fires with a so-called culture war. You are one month in the job. Is it fair to point at the years that you've inherited and indeed Dame Sara's assertions? Home Secretary. Well, look, of course, the, the situation that we face now is uh, ha has a whole long history in terms of what's happened over Including very many the years. Culture war? But I think the and I think there is actually a serious debate that we need to have about extremism in this country where I don't think strong enough action has been taken for a long time. And I am very keen to see much more action taken against extremism. I don't think that's been done. As of today, I actually want all political parties to come together on this because I think everybody needs to stand firm against the violence and the thuggery. So I'm not going to start raising those party issues now, even though I do have strong views in this area about some of the things that need to change. You need to be at the COBRA meeting. I'm very grateful for our extended interview. Thank you, Home Secretary Yvette Cooper, appearing here on LBC three minutes after eight.